Hi, this is Tony Salas here with Diesel Talk. Thought I'd show you this quick video on the replacement of a fuel filter which turned into a lift pump. Some of you may have seen other videos from other people where they're talking about the squealing pump. We had a squealing pump and we also had low volume. So let's watch this real quick. And yeah, it's hot as heck today. 113, 114 out there, but uh, we're managing. Okay, working on a 2011 6.7 liter uh, Ford F-350. Uh, we've been, uh, this was supposed to be just a service. When it came in, it was an appointment. We have done, we had done the engine about three years ago. So uh, the young lady's done a great job of uh, doing a good maintenance on it, bringing it in for periodic service. So it was due for fuel filters this time. But upon uh, doing some testing, and because we don't just do the service, we look at everything. We do a quick scan while we're at it. That pump was noisy, very noisy. So here you can see the pump already replaced. Um, those of you who've never done one, there's a lot of videos on YouTube on that. But uh, one thing you got to watch out for is making sure, those of you who are really novices, make sure you get this, uh, when you get this back on, I actually took it off already, but um, I left it loose. But make sure you uh, get that fuel filter housing back on. And let me get this uh, a little bit there. In this case, you'll notice, um, you know, I left this on purpose so you can see, but make sure you tighten this all the way to the end right there. So you'll notice two tabs right there. So therefore, need to tighten there. And if you're really, really new to this, uh, just remember in order to do the uh, this cover, there's a nut right there, which I believe is a 32 millimeter. So in this case, uh, yeah, there you go with that. So the thing is, uh, the pump was very noisy. And the thing is, when I took it for a test drive, uh, the rail pressure was not there. So it had a code, intermittent code, for low rail pressure, but on the low pressure side. So somewhere down here, and I'm going to try to get over my overhead creeper here, but somewhere over here on the bottom there, you can see the outlet line. You can see my rag still there. I'm getting to that in a minute. But anyways, you're going to see a low pressure switch, which should be right about there, right there where my finger's at. There's your low pressure switch. There's a wiring going to it. And what it is, is that it's designed that a pressure drops under, I believe it's 38 PSI, you're gonna actually get a message. So we had an intermittent code for low pressure there. So in other words, when you're dealing with uh, common rails on these uh, hard stroke six sevens, just understand that you're gonna have low rail pressure codes on the high pressure side, but you can also have low pressure on the low pressure side. So that's a good thing. In other words, we used to put a low pressure gauge to check low pressure and do a volume check like Cummins asked for on their Cummins application. So anyways, what I'm getting at, here's some, there's a reality we have gotten sometimes when we have uh, had a, uh, you know, a, a fuel filter service. So what can happen, or even right now when I just did the pump, you know, once again, there's the pump assembly that I just did. Um, but uh, the, also the other thing is, um, um, that, uh, you know, I'm trying to get my thoughts here. In other words, uh, we, I got it put together. I turned on the pump. So here's my IDS scan tool. And what you can see closely right here is I can command there on the upper right, right there. I can command, you know, the pump on. So in this case, I command the pump on. But what had happened earlier, before I actually shot this video, is that I'm going to go over here to the scan tool and I'm going to command the lip pump. So I'm going to highlight it here. Let me get it closer. Not to get too much of a reflection, but no. They select, select it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate it and I'm gonna activate the lift pump. So there it's turned on. And there you can see immediately that the, the low pressure switch actually said not low. Once again, for those who didn't catch it, let me turn it off. Okay, it says low. And at that point, it goes to not low. Okay, now what was happening before I decided to shoot this video, and you must forgive me, I'm sweating up a storm for those of you not knowing what we're going through we're it's majorly hot even though our uh, our shop is running pretty cool cool considering and in this case yeah we got a thermometer right here so you can see our thermometer and it's just shy of look at that uh 90 degrees at the uh, evaporative coolers here in las vegas are designed to reduce 20 degrees under ambient but when the temperature is sky high we're going to have a little bit of a problem so but in this case uh you can see our temperature but anyways um yeah pump is on so in this case we got an issue here so let me turn off the pump okay so once again we turn it on again and what we're going to do is run the pump again oops you have to forgive me we're going to go ahead 
on the pump. Pump is on, low, not low. So we are getting pressure there, okay? So now what was the problem? Once again, recapping. What I was doing was, is that I was actually um, got the pump installed. And at that point, I'm running the pump. And I usually like to run the pumps for about 10 minutes like you just saw me do right now here with IDS scan tool. Well, we did do that. And the problem was is that um, I wasn't getting, it was always reading low right there. It was always reading low. So in this case, a trick that I've learned, and I believe Ford had a bulletin back in 2011. And what you're going to do is, let me move the laptop and not drop it out of the way, is um, that line right there. So I got my little, I usually get a bottle of soda. Here you can see that I usually use this here. Sometimes I have to use a bottle of soda right there. And what I do is I actually disconnect this line right here. So let me get a better shot of it over my overhead creeper. And by the way, if you haven't invested in an overhead creeper, if you're a tech, best investment you can make. But anyways, uh, there's your uh, outlet line. And what you do is pull the clip over forward down and you pull on this line. And in this case, I'll put in that soda bottle right here, like I just showed you. And what I try to do is I try to, um, you know, burp out any air. So therefore, you may have to burp out the air. And sure enough, as soon as I release this, thank goodness I put some rags, um, a big, you know, just spewed a lot of pressure. And the thing is, it should have not been pressurized. There was air there. So in this case, if you ever have the problem where after you do a fuel filter or lip pump like I did, in this case, and it will still read low, you know, on the fuel pump, and you might get a, uh, you know, derape in terms of low fuel grill pressure. So the secret is simply go ahead and unclip this and release, and then you can activate the pump. So had I not had pressure and I still had an air bubble there, again, I would have put the soda bottle right here. And with the scan tool, what I would have done is I would have gone ahead and command the pump on. So therefore you do have bi-directional control where you can activate and turn on the pump. So therefore that's what I did pressure was released in other words air and at that point i turn it on and we see that the low pressure switch is now reading not low okay so recap pump was installed or fuel filters installed and you still see that this is reading low in this case that would mean that you, you got air in the system even though you might have run the pump or cycled the key maybe you don't have a scan tool you can cycle the key several times and at that point it will actually um, show you that um, there is not low those of you that have aftermarket scan tools like a uh, performance tuners they might show this data too as well so so the moral of the story is um watch out because you can run into conditions where you'll do it right you do the lip pump you do fuel filter service let's say and the thing is it'll still read low pressure switch will read low so therefore always read that carefully okay now, another important thing, when people bitch about the CP4 pump, this is where the CP4 pump gets hurt, okay? The CP4 pump gets hurt because, why? Uh, there is air and there is low pressure there, and that can destroy the CP4 pump. So many of us have said that when you do service, such as fuel filters, uh, that's the chances where you're going to actually hurt the actual, you know, the actual lip um, CP4 pump. So remember, if you haven't seen the other video, uh, the CP4 pump, what takes it out is the is low pressure and also air. So therefore, we're trying to reduce that. So food for thought. Anyways, um, there you go. Uh, next time you uh, work on him, watch this video. Hopefully it'll help you. Thanks a lot for watching.